one, the washing and renewing of the mind to the settled death. And we're talking about the labor and we're comparing that to the progress, to the progress, a progression where um, this should not be just, we come together regularly for years and years and years and everything's just another, it's like a big pile. You just throw it on the pile, you know what I mean? It's like a bunch of dead rats. <laughs> and uh, there's supposed to be a progression. There's supposed to be <laughs> a true progression, sorry. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, let's not do that. <laughs> All right. So, um, um, step two is revealing the person we're still talking about here revealing the person and then being changed into his image which talks about down here um, revealing the person is what's true in in him what is true of him in him change into his image is when that begins to be brought down in actual life form, a new life form. <laughs> All right, so let's start with, uh, we already quoted a little bit of this, but let's go to 2 Corinthians 3, and we'll do 14 through 18. <clears throat> I know you're familiar with this, but there are, um, in light of the labor, this shows that it's not just the water. There's a mirror. And we're supposed to look into that mirror and see him. And that's what this scripture is talking about. And I believe it's talking about the true labor. And I think that the, remember that the Old Testament labor and all of that was just a shadow of this. It wasn't the real. And that was part of their problem because they worshiped and served the shadow. Because they didn't have the real. Okay. 2 Corinthians 3, 14 through 18. But their minds were blinded, for until this day, for their, but their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart, Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But, but we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, and that word is mirror in the Greek, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. <clears throat> okay. So yes, it takes the spirit of the Lord, even as by the spirit of the Lord. This is done even as by the spirit of the Lord. It is where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But charismatic type Christianity has made it all a work of the spirit and no work of the labor, no work of looking into the word, the Old Testament, remember, because they didn't have a New Testament at this time and seeing Jesus, okay? And so, um, so, so the, wa the water's there to wash away our old mind, but then there's that big, huge mirror of the laver, and we see him. We don't see us, we see him. But we don't just see Jesus in some sort of a, um, well, this is the way Randy taught it when he first started New Creation. And, you know, and so we're going to see Jesus. So we're going to see something good in the scripture. No, we want to see Jesus. And, and, but this seeing is different. I mean, I believe that you can have a revelation of the word and of Christ in the word and not have a revelation of Christ. Therefore, I believe it's possible to see Jesus and share scriptures like crazy, really good stuff and never be able to live it because you're not changed into that same image. I mean, I, you say, well, what's the big deal about you believing that? 
I don't know, but I'm just telling you what I believe. <laughs> you don't have to believe what I believe. <clears throat> and I still love you if you don't. But, I mean, I think the scriptures are pretty, pretty sure on this labor thing. And that's part of the process. And I would think if you skip any part of the, the process in, to get to the Holy of Holies, you're stuck because that everything leads to something else. And without it, then you're stuck. And, and let's just face it. Has anybody at any time ever in your walk with the Lord felt stuck? Yeah. Ke Kelly, I didn't say drove off a cliff. I said stuck. <laughs> okay. So, um, the renewing or, or, um, is that we look into the labor and we see his face. No, we don't just see his face. Here's the, here's the amazing thing that the Spirit of God is trying to break to us in these scriptures. And that is, we see who we are. We see who we are. And you know what I mean. I mean, we're not Jesus, but we're one with Jesus. And that nature belongs to us, not, by, not like the law, where you have to do this. It can't be that. It is, he's offering us himself and his nature is part of who he is. You know? If you knew the gift of God and who it was that you're looking at, then you would have asked me for living water to flow out of me into you. You know? And so, you know, we look in there and we see a different image than ourself. Okay, now I think we know the law of contrast. All of us have looked in the word and seen a different image other than ourselves. That can either condemn you or it can change you. It will condemn you as long as you still are you and, and want to remain you. It will free you from you if you want him more than you want you. And I know that's hard. I remember, I remember when I was in Bible school and somebody said something like that. And I go, but I love me. You know? Well, you know, you're going to have to get over it, buddy. <laughs> you know, if you want Jesus, you're going to have to get over it. That's all there is to it. So we see a different image. We see it is what we're looking at is, oh, I'm looking in a mirror and it's not I, but Christ. It's not I, see? Okay, now how long can you work on yourself to get rid of everything so that when you look in a mirror, it's not you? You, you, can, you can do that forever. Or you can just say, it's not about works, not by works of righteousness, which we, which we have done, but by the renewing and the washing of the word. Remember it said that in Titus 3, 5. Praise God, I mean, that's, that's like hope for for the for the cult for the culturally deprived. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just going to read a scripture because I was thinking about this one, and I don't know how much time we got. There. <clears throat> but um, so don't turn there, so we don't lose much time here. But it's talking about a mirror, a glass. When it uses the word glass, most of the time it's talking about a mirror. This is Revelation 4, 6. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass, like an under crystal. In the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes and before and behind. But there was something else on the throne. What was it? It was the Lamb of God, and it's reflecting back. And we're looking. You can look in the water, and it reflects him. You're looking in the glass, and the, this one right here, this one that is above is, but it's the Lamb of God. You're, you, you say, well, I can't see him. There's thousands here and everything. You just look in the mirror and there he is. You know? Hallelujah. Okay. I'll let Patty catch up. 
Ten minutes? Is that true? Well, I am. Are you actually cheating? Okay. <laughs> She's going, this is good. You have, she goes, this is good. You have 50 minutes. Wait a minute. We don't do 50 minutes. Okay, step three. Step three. Uh, step three is to make Christ crucified visible. Okay? Let's see if I can do this real quick. Step one was the washing and renewing the mind to the settled death. Step two was revealing the person changed into his image. Step three is make Christ crucified visible. All right. To get that, let's go to James chapter 1. James 1, verse 22 through 25. James. How do you say James, Jaime? Santiago. Santiago, that's it. Santiago. 1, 22 through 25. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. Okay, so here's us. There we're going to go. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get involved in the ministry. Remember we talked about the ministry? Yes. Anybody remember that? Actually, we didn't. The scriptures did. The Lord did. And it was pretty clear that it was tied to, to the scriptures in front of it. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. All right, I don't know what your experience is. But I, I tend to deceive myself more than the devil gets through to deceive me. It's like, you know, you just kind of, you know, you just go, well, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I had one today, actually, and I, it was early this morning, and I had this thought run through my mind. And I went, if I believe that, then I'm deceiving myself. And I don't want to deceive myself. I mean, you know, the devil, that's his job. Why, why pay, you know, why pay him? And then me do all the work. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass, in a mirror. Here we are again. The laver. Because I don't know that they had glass mirrors even by that time. I don't think they did, but. So you got, you're looking into the mirror. And so he's saying, if any be a hearer of the word, not a doer, he's like a man looking into, uh, uh, looking into a glass and beholding his natural face. He still sees himself. All right. Again, this picture on the board in Christ. There is no way Christ in you can ever be manifested as long as that's the case. You know, you, you see something in the scriptures and you see Jesus and you glory in the fact of something you saw or whatever. And we've all probably done that. Um, you, um, you see something wrong in somebody and, you know, you don't, you don't see Jesus. You don't, you know, you're not aware that Jesus said that judging is like a mirror. However you judge, that's reflecting back on you. Okay. All right. So I can go into that, but we're going to run out of time. <clears throat> For he beholdeth himself. He's looking at himself. Okay. So how do we, how do we stop? How do we not let that happen anymore? Okay, well, first of all, the heart has to turn to the Lord. Well, where is it turning from? Off of yourself. It's, it's like, I, I believe there's incredible value for being sick of yourself. You know, and for those who, who don't want to love Jesus more than they love themselves, the Lord can fix that. <laughs> he can fix that. Yeah, he can make you so sick of yourself that it's like quail coming out your nose, you know. And so, and then your heart turns to the Lord. Sadly, it's not just, I just love you and I don't, I, don't, I really like myself, but I want to go to the cross. 
But that's better than nothing, amen? It is better than nothing. <clears throat> so, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way. Okay, so he's beholding himself and he's going his way. All right. Now, here's what we assume. We assume that somebody that's doing that, that's going his own way, is somebody who just says, I've, I've had it with church and God, and I'm just going to go out, and I'm going to go to the bars or do whatever I want. But actually, going your own way is pretty common in the church. No, I mean... <laughs> no, <not me>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, mainly only on one particular side, this side. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> um, and go with his way. And as soon as you go your way, there's something automatic that happens. You forget what matter of man you are. The, the man in the mirror, Jesus. You forget it. And there's something about this when we, when we go our own way that it just happens rapidly and all of a sudden we're living our own way. We're thinking our own way. We literally have left the labor and because, you know, he that continueth in the word, you shall know that if you continue in my word, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. If you continue at the labor, you will keep washing your thoughts, you, your thoughts, your ways. You'll start washing that away or you'll, you'll continually be doing that. And you'll be staring at the face in the mirror, which is Jesus. And that's your hope right there. Because you'll be changed into that same image, not a different image. Not, I'm better than I was. It will be that same image. Because if it's going to be real, it's going to have to flow down from the original. Okay? And anything that's not the original is a copy. It's a copy. You know. And, you know, we're not trying to copy Christ. We want him alive in us alive and so what does it say here in him we're dead for you you know i'll read that in just a minute for you're dead but in us we're alive unto god through jesus christ this same lamb it's the same spirit it's the same you know but but it's it's living um sacrifice it's not just See, I just don't believe in sacrifice. I believe that Christ is the acceptable sacrifice and that anything I do in my good heart to sacrifice is just me. It's just me. It's just me. And God's going, that's not what I want. And we're going, I know you do because I'm really good and I'm special and I'm, I'm pretty sure that you love me, you know, because of me. Anyway, um, but whoso, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue, see, there it is, if you continue in my word, if you look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, he being not a forgetful here because you can't forget because you keep seeing him. But a doer of the work, and there it is, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. All right. So... Let's see. I have to, I didn't jot it down here, but I have to give you um, the work, the ministry, the work, the, the what is it? He's, he calls it the work, and it is a ministry. Well, this is slowing me down here. I should have had it in here. Okay, so. Um, Verse 18, but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Very next verse, even though it's a 
chapter chains, it, they didn't have chapters and verses. Very next sentence, therefore seeing we have this ministry. This is the ministry that James just talked about, is staying in the word so that you might be changed, staying at the labor, washing and looking, washing, looking. Oh, I just had one of my old thoughts. Oh God, wash this away with your word and looking and this is the ministry seeing that we have this ministry we faint not but if we don't have this ministry we faint and we forget we faint and we forget and then finally colossians 3 verse 1 through 5. so what would what have we been talking about we've been talking about seeing what is settled, that is a firm foundation upon what you can build, okay? And we've been talking about seeing what is hidden from our eyes until we look in there and see. And some people go to the labor and they never look in there and see his face, they just keep trying to wash themselves clean. So let's read first. I'm in uh, Colossians 3, 1 through 5. If you then be risen with Christ, okay, so this is this in him. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth. Okay, so we go, I've been seeking what's above. I've been seeking streets of gold and gates of pearl and a bigger mansion. He didn't, he never mentioned that. He said, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits. Well, where do you sit? Where Christ sits. You're not in his lap. And you're not trying to kick him off the throne. You're in him. At the right hand of God, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Okay, so this is a heart condition. Your heart has to set your affections there. You say, well, I try to, but my mind keeps dragging me back down to the earth. He didn't say set your mind on it. If your heart is truly there, you'll see changes come because it starts flowing down, see? And it, that's the way. But if you're trying to just change your mind, I don't, you know, that's right. It's like trying to, what does it say? A leopard changing his spots almost. It's like trying to change a jackass into a leopard. I don't, I don't think that's the scriptures. Anyway. It's, uh, it's uh, the RTN version. Uh, <clears throat> um, set your affections, for ye are dead. Okay, so it's saying not on the earth, for you're dead. Set your affections on him up here, the, the settled death and the settledness of him who is and was and is to come. And then not on things on the earth, because you're dead with this guy. See, you don't change position. You don't, you don't try to figure, you know, oh, there's two things. No, it's just one. Set your affections here and you'll see you're dead. Look into the labor and you'll see water and his reflection. It's one thing. Okay? We make it so hard. Well, there's 27 steps to finding out if you're really saved. Then, you know. <clears throat> All right. For you're dead, oh, get it, get it. For you're dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. Where's your life? That it's You're there. You're here. You're there. Quit trying to be there. You're there. Believe it. But, but all the believing in the world isn't going to happen unless you keep washing this. You know, so we go, well, I've heard, I've heard a sermon similar to this, Randy, in 2001, and then back in 1983, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and when you preached in Jamaica in 71, and, and you know, <laughs> and, what, and all of that is added up to what? Nothing. There has to be this desire to see this from him, Amen. not from me. That's right. When Christ, who is your life, shall appear, 
That's what we're after. That's this down here. But that, see, there's no need walking around going, oh, I want Christ to, who's, uh, to be life in me. I want him to appear in me. So I'm going to walk into this meeting, and I'm going to stand there, and I hope somebody walks up because Jesus is going to appear. Ready? Okay. And then you go, and they walk right by, and you go, I, I didn't know what to say. You know? story of our lives <laughs> but his appearing comes from here his appearing in us comes from above if you will see people are going well when Jesus comes back coming from above well they're looking for just a guy like a, us to show up and go hey there he is I can tell he's got sandals and a robe on you know and praise God no there is a change when we see him there is an appearing when we see him, but this is the one, and this is how it will happen, and no other thing will do it. So, so let me just, you know, let me end with this. Have I got, what, what have I got, one? Zero. I got, what? Did you hold up a one for me? Yeah, I got two. Okay. Vanna, <laughs> you're fired. Well, I'm going to go a few. I'm going to go a few minutes past this. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you appear also with Him in glory, because that's the glory of it, Christ in you. Mortify therefore your members which are on the earth. And the word mortify means what? Put to death. Put to death. It means now you've got power coming from here into you, and now in you you can mortify things but always based on the secure death. For ye are dead, for ye are dead, for ye are dead, for ye are dead. But Christ, when your life appears, he appears in you. This all ties together real well. I don't know if I did a bad job or not, but it's, it's, it's some good stuff. Did somebody say terrible? <laughs> okay, now I'm fired. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much that um, we are meant to be those priests, and it is in our heart to be those priests that that get this so in us that we can we can manifest Christ. We can have Christ crucified, seen in the earth. We can drive the stakes, and we can stretch Him out on that cross, on that earth. And they can enter into him and see the death and see their death. And they can enter into him and see him in the labor. Holy Spirit, I know what your greatest desire is, is to speak of him, to reveal him. So we just want to get you excited right now and tell you, show us Jesus. Regardless of what we've seen to this point, show us Jesus so that the, the, the progression of this is life and not step one, step two, and step three. It's life. And you are the life that brings us into it. Without you, we are nothing. But with you, we are in you and can bring forth your fruit, You can your life, as we abide in you, can come into us and bring forth fruit that pleases the Father and touches other lives and fills up others as they taste of this fruit, the fruit of your life, Jesus, in us. Thank you. Thank you for hope. Thank you for faith. Thank you for love. These three will abide. They will stand. They will stand. And we will stand in him. In Jesus' name. Amen. All righty, boys and girls. Love you.